effects of the shape of the device. I modeled uh, the cylinder, uh, but oscillating the cylindrical the sphere, oscillating the sphere. Of the sphere. And I looked at the compression distribution, but one the axis coming out of the major of the symmetrical sphere. Uh, you can see that the two different normal accelerations, uh, the compression distribution is a start function at a certain distance, which is pretty close to the distance. So that leads you to believe that the shape is not bad up on that function. Extending this model to a different medium, we can use the radiation boundary condition, which just makes you lose all the quality of reflections. So theoretically, uh, it should be the same for whatever number you specify. However, we to verify that I use the same examples, impose the radiation boundary condition on the top and the side of these other two of the outer cylinders, while keeping these conditions the same, meaning the same area and the same area. Uh, so varying the side of the radius and height of the outer cylinder, we can see that the pressure distribution changes as you increase the size of the cylinder. For example, for a sphere, so these um, curves indicate the sphere in the cylinder model, the cylinder in the cylinder model, can move for its outer radius of 1.7 meters, and then 1.6 meters, and then 1.20 meters. You can see that the pressure level changes as you increase the of the size of the cylinder. Uh, however, going out farther, far farther down, here's the cylinder 150 and 250 radi uh, radius, and you can see that uh, the solutions do convert. In fact, I plotted the sphere analytical solution, which, which is a problem similar to the one before, but for an infinite region. And you can now you can see it because the sphere is to the left. And the solid dot sphere is the cylinder in the simulation, you can see that they agree to the uh, So that, so in conclusion, the accelerometer data can be used to provide feedback from the camera. And the cylinder can be approximated as a spherical source. Also, the model can be extended into an open water and by the, the geometry the problem is larger. Still, to make a prediction, it would be more uh, information about counts, movement, and that is kind of basic. I'd like to acknowledge these people. Let's thank Alex. And now I'll open the floor to questions. I'd actually like to Alex out of the room the first question. As I understand it, this um, whole device is meant to operate in deep water. And so that's what your modeling was okay. for. Do you take into account the salinity or temperature of the water in your models? Uh, no, I do not. I only account for the density of the speed of sound. Well, I guess the speed of sound depends on the temperature, so, but I did not um, actually correct the speed of sound for the temperature of the water. I just used the average. That was um, actually shallow water. Mm -hmm. So it's meant for shallow water. Did you have any interest in signals other than regular, I guess, uh, sinusoidal variation, like trying to shape the signal to produce a brief, intense pressure? Uh, I don't think so. Eventually, so this device can be made of modules of different frequencies. So uh, I guess they, they don't have to be completely under the sinusoidal signal, but they will be different frequencies on the same shape. So should we try to have higher frequencies or lower frequencies? Well, higher would be like 10 hertz, so it would be still a little bit of 20 to 40 hertz. It would be a good change. This results in simulation, which is the one that the simulator results in the test. So I would know that the results in the test would be the same. Additional questions, Chris? Uh, just kind of a quick clarification. Uh, this, I mean, you're uh, building this device to detonate uh, basically mines. Is it, um, how far away does it have to? I mean, what's the what's oh, the range of the device? Are you not sure? Not there, sure. there is a there's a specification on how much shock it stands to. Okay. Not sure. 